Hey guys, so what's up? How's it going? <laughs> How's everyone doing right now with all this COVID-19 stuff? Um, I said it, the name of it. Hopefully I'm not going to get flagged or demonetized, but it is what it is. I mean, this is globally now, so whatever. Anyway, here comes Riley. Hey, are you coming? Come, come on. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so how's everyone doing? Let me know in the comments. How are you? Are you at home? Are you still working? What's going on in your city? Because it seems to be different everywhere. Um, Toronto, it or Ontario, I should say. I think actually all the provinces in Canada. There hasn't been any shutdowns yet. Um, but just about everywhere is closing on their own. Um, right now, I think just about everyone is closed except um, restaurants that can do takeout and drive through and delivery. Um, and then of course, medical people, um, hospitals, doctors, medical centers, stuff like that. Um, and grocery stores. Um, our grocery stores have, over the last few days, most of them, if not all of them by now, have made the first hour of their store hours um, for seniors and disabled people. So that's nice um, to see them doing that. And they also are discouraging now, they're discouraging the use of reusable bags. And um, so to encourage using the plastic bags, they're taking away the five cent plastic bag fee. <laughs> it's so crazy because like, you know, they're always promoting bringing your own bags. And so they started charging um, five cents per plastic shopping bag. Now it's the opposite um, because they don't want reusable bags that could have germs on them. Um, I don't know what Riley's doing right now. He's like climbing all over me weird. Um, so they're doing that. And then they said, if you do bring reusable bags um, to that they won't, uh, they will not, um, cashiers will not bag for you. It's up to you to bag, but we usually shop at no frills and no frills doesn't bag your stuff. Anyways, we usually have to do it by ourselves anyway. So pretty much used to it. Um, so that's not a big deal. And what else? Oh, I don't know if I don't know which grocery stores are doing this because it said some stores. It didn't say all stores, but some of them are, um, they're doing where they're only letting a certain amount of people in the store at a time. And they're going to only have every other cashier open as well as I think they're starting to implement some sort of, I, I didn't really fully understand it. I guess it's hard to understand it until you see it. But I think they're supposed to have some sort of markers in place to try and keep, to have everyone keep their distance from each other. Um, so they're doing that. Um, so I feel like uh, so far, like Canada's been pretty proactive. And overall, it seems most Canadians are following it. Um, it seemed like it seems like each day there's less and less people that I see outside and the streets are getting more and more empty with each passing day. Um, I did work this week and 
um, was taking the transit as I talked about in my last video. Um, I was really disappointed though to see um, all this week when I would take Jackson for a walk um, in the stroller. We would just do walks in the neighborhood in the stroller and if there was anyone walking like coming towards us on the sidewalk I would then cross over to the other side of the street just to try and you know social distance um and or like if I could go around them I would try to like do the six feet apart thing as much as I could um we did not go onto the playground because to me playgrounds are cesspools of germs but I was really like shocked and disappointed to see so many parents um, taking their kids to the playground. They were on the playground equipment. Kids were basically having play dates on the basketball court, playing basketball. Um, the dog park area in the big park there was full of adults walking their dogs and everyone was in close proximity. It was like, hello people, what are you doing? Like, <sighs> And I've seen that in the U.S. Um, a lot of places have locked up playgrounds or they've put the yellow tape around the playground equipment to keep people away from them. And they really need to do that here. They really do because people are not listening in that sense. And I'm like, you people are putting your kids in a cesspool of germs. Um, from what I've read, the, the virus stays on metal and plastic for days. I think metal is like nine days. Plastic is like five days or something like that. So it's like, anyways, um, I've kept Jackson off the playground equipment. We've literally just done a walk or we play in the backyard for a little bit for some fresh air and that's it. Um, so that's what's happening with that. Now today I was um, let go to go home early. Um, I put Jackson down for his nap around noon and his mom was like, he's probably going to sleep for like two hours. Um, and I usually work till three. So she's like, there's no point in you sticking around. And, but she says before you, before we drop you off at the subway station, we just wanted to like talk about, you know, what we're going to do going forward with what's going on. And, you know, she was just asking how I was feeling about the whole situation. And I told her that, um, you know, like I go back and forth on whether I feel okay going out um, or not, because, <laughs> you know, we do know that they do know that I have a compromised immune system, but also the mom is at high risk as well because she's pregnant. So, uh, we're both kind of in a high risk situation. So we both have to be careful. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, I, I feel safe at their house because we're pretty much staying in the house the whole day other than a quick little walk outside. Um, and I did, I, I'm iffy on taking the transit, um, uh, because of the germs on it, but I'm not paranoid to take it because it's like almost completely empty now. Like the other day on the bus, like when I got on the bus, I was the only person on the bus for about I don't know, five stops and then someone else got on and they sat like way at the back. Um, and I was like way at the front of the bus. So it was kind of like, and then, I mean, I don't know, probably by the time we got to the subway station, there was maybe a total of 10 people on the bus. And so we were all spread out. Like we had distance between each other. So I didn't feel that uncomfortable. And some of the people were, were wearing masks. Um, now, I mean, the, the CDC and even my rheumatologist has said that um, there's no need to wear a mask because it really doesn't protect you at all. Um, I got a whole email from my rheumatologist at the lupus clinic and um, they just 
basically told us the same things they're telling everyone else about washing hands, don't touch your face, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the, the stuff that they keep saying. Um, they told us we don't really need to wear masks unless we are sick. And I think that's what they've been telling the general public as well. If you're sick, you have to wear one so that you don't get others sick. But if you're not sick, like if you're not having symptoms of COVID-19, then you don't have to wear one. Um, but I know some people out there are really panicked and paranoid and are wearing them. And you know what? Like if it makes them feel safer, go ahead. The only issue is that uh, the, the, you know, the hospitals and clinics and stuff, they're running out of masks. Um, a lot of hospitals have had people, patients stealing masks, boxes of masks, and then there's none for the medical personnel to use, which is like absolutely horrible because they're in the front lines and they need to be protected. So that's really frustrating. Um, so I haven't worn a mask. I don't feel the need to, um, just from what I was told by my doctor. Um, my doctor's email did also say that we could go to work as long as we took all the precautions. Um, but this was before, I think I got the email. I'm trying to think. I think I got the email last Friday. So like a week ago. And it was before the school closures happened. It was before all these other things happened. So I'm kind of waiting for an updated email. Excuse me, an updated email because I, I don't know <laughs> if I should be going to work. Um, so this is what we were talking about today. So um, they are kind of concerned for my safety as well as the mom's safety because we're both at high risk and the only the only thing that they're mostly concerned about is me taking transit um otherwise like if i like if i was driving it would literally be walk out of my house go into the car get out of the car and go into their house that seems pretty safe um so they said that they're going to wait and see what more we hear over the weekend. Cause like our prime minister and our government has been, um, giving speeches like every day and giving us new updated information and new rules and new things to follow. So every day is changing. <laughs> so they said, let's wait. We're going to see what happens over the weekend but they're kind of leaning toward not having me stay home next week for um, just for the week for now. And they'll, they'll do the guaranteed hours. They'll pay me, which is good because <laughs> I don't want to be without pay. Um, and then they're setting me up right now under you know, all the legalities of having me down as an employee where I, you know, pay into taxes and unemployment and all of that. Um, and then their hopes is that, you know, depending on how long this goes on for, if they can't, you know, keep paying me to stay home, then our government has said that they're getting measures in place and programs in place to help us financially. So, um, either I can try for EI, although I highly doubt I'll qualify for it because I don't think I've worked enough hours to qualify for it. But the government has said, if you don't qualify for EI, there's going to be something else, um, some sort of an emergency fund that they'll be giving financial help to people with. So, there's that option. So they just want to make sure that they get all the paperwork done and have me legally down as their employee. Um, so that if I need to access those, um, 
things I can. Um, so at least I know I'll be paid for next week if I do stay home. They're going to contact me on Sunday and we'll discuss and figure out a plan. Um, one plan that we talked about is... So before I get into this plan, I'm going to have to explain part of this. So part of the plan would be having Alex drive me to and from work on Mondays. And the reason that he would be able to do that is that unfortunately his work, um, being a car rental company that relies heavily on travel and tourism, um, they've taken a huge financial hit. So there has been tons of layoffs and for him and some of his coworkers at his office, they have reduced their work hours to three days a week. So he'll be working Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, starting this week, this coming week. Um, so he'll be home Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, they're giving them the option to use up any sick days they have left for the days that they'll be off. And then after that, um, usually their vacation time resets in May, but they're going to give it to them early if they need to use that, depending on how long this goes on for. Like no one knows this is the problem is that no one knows how long this is going to go on for. Like it could be two weeks. It could be three weeks. It could be months. I have even heard some rumors that it could go on for like a year, which I hope to God that's not true because that's insane. Um, so that's what's going on there. So he would be home Mondays. So he would be able to drive me to and from work. So I don't have to take the TTC, which is good. So I offered that suggestion to them and then they offered to drive me the other days. Um, if we can work that out somehow. So, uh, that's an option. Um, but we have, we have to kind of decide and discuss and agree upon what's best. Um, another thing that I've seen other nannies doing um, I'm in a nanny forum online and of course this has been a huge discussion within the nanny profession because all of us are kind of like what's going to happen because a lot of um, parents are not working. So a lot of nannies are currently at home without pay because the parents are at home without pay. Other nannies have parents who are working from home, so they still need their nanny to come in, which is sort of like my situation. The parents work from home. Um, so they still are having their nanny come in, so their nanny gets paid. Other parents that work from home are just saying, stay home, we'll still pay you. There's so many different scenarios. And then some nannies work for doctors who are essential services. So they, those people especially need childcare because they're doctors that work long shifts. So those nannies are still working for them. Um, a few nannies have offered ideas of what they agreed upon with their families. And one of the ideas that I thought was pretty cool is working remotely. And you're probably thinking like, how the heck does a nanny work remotely? So um, basically what one, two nannies I think I've seen so far have, have done this. So they're staying at home and in order to still get paid, what they're doing is um, they are planning the activities just like they usually would sending the activities to the parents to carry out. Um, some of them are FaceTiming to demonstrate the activities and have the kids follow along. Now, that would probably be more so for older kids, like school-age kids, so the parents can kind of just sit the kids in front of the iPad, let the kids FaceTime and do their activity with their nanny um, over FaceTime while the parents do other things. Now, 
Jackson's only a year old, so he needs supervision. Um, so it would be a little tricky to do that. Um, the only thing I can think of is that I've already made up this month's calendar of activities. The calendar is at his home. Most of the supplies for the activities are already at his house. I do have a few here in the bag that were Easter related activities. Um, and the reason I was going to be starting Easter activities this month was because originally his parents were supposed to be taking a two week trip, um, starting April, uh, I think it was like April 5th and they would be back on like the 17th. So I was going to have two weeks off and it fell into Easter. So I was like, oh crap, like I'm not going to be seeing him to do Easter activities before Easter. So I threw the Easter activities into this month. Well, obviously they're not going to be traveling now with all of this going on. So my thought was move the Easter activities into April since I have the supplies here. Um, and then replan activities for the rest of March if I was to stay home for the rest of March. And then I could send them instructions, <clears throat> visual guidance on how to carry out the activities and I could explain to him explain to them where those materials are. Like we have two bins. Um, they, they got me two Rubbermaid bins to keep supplies in as well as I bought a sensory bin and we sort of store stuff in the sensory bin as well. So I would just tell them, you know, which bin it's in, you know, describe it to them, help them find the stuff. So that way I'm sort of still doing work. Um, we could essentially FaceTime and I could like read stories over FaceTime because I I'm very animated with reading stories we could sing songs over FaceTime um, do music time um, also I downloaded this really cool app that I found out about through a nanny forum and you put in the child's name and their birthday and each day it gives you activities to do that are developmentally and age appropriate for the child which is it's been amazing and it covers all these like developmental domains so originally I downloaded the free version of it and there was um I would get one activity a day and the other activities I couldn't access unless I paid the monthly subscription to get to unlock the other features. Well, with all of the COVID-19 stuff until the end of March, they have unlocked everything for free. So I've been getting access to all these awesome activities. I have the ability to invite Jackson's mom to join the app so that she can see those activities. So it would give her ideas of things that we're doing. Um, and she could carry those out at home with him. So these are just ideas that I have floating in my head that I might present to her when we talk on Sunday, if we decide that we're going to do me staying at home for now. Um, cause obviously we got to, you know, think about me being immune compromised and her being at high risk being pregnant. So it's important. So that's what's currently happening. Um, we're, I, I, I'm a little stressed with all of it. Just thinking about the economy and the finances and all this stuff and Alex's work and whatever. And then we had some stressful things going on this week as well with my grandma. Um, yeah, I'm not, some stressful stuff. She, she's okay. Um, I don't know if I, she, she's back at, she's back home. She's back out of the hospital. She's been out of the hospital for like a year now. Um, and she's been doing well, but her memory is getting really bad. Um, and we were trying to get her into a long-term care facility and she didn't want to go. And 
then she changed her mind but by then the room that was offered to her had been given to someone else and now it's she's got to get back on a wait list and the wait list can be long and it's a whole big thing so we're stressed out about that because she might be running out of money within the next year and so we've got to try to figure out where she is going to go and at this point it's looking like she may have to move in with my mom so <laughs> we're trying to deal with that and it was kind of like holy crap like what bad timing um because she's been on the list for a while for long-term care um she doesn't really need it physically yet she's still okay taking care of herself for the most part i mean where she where she lives now there are nurses that come and bathe her and give her her medications um and then of course the the home she's in provides the meals um but it's more a matter of finances right now and the best place for her would be a long-term care facility for that reason but now it's not happening uh, so basically the, I don't know how it works over in the US but here in Canada you're put on a wait list you get to choose your top three or four places that you want to go to and this place came up that we never thought would come up it was her number one choice it's the best place uh, it's amazing it's an amazing place and um, usually they have like a five-year wait list but a room came up there during the coronavirus outbreak of all times like the worst time to be thinking about moving an elderly person but it is what it is and the room came up and um you have 24 hours to tell them if you'll take it and if you don't you have to start all over you have to reapply then you get back on the list but then you're at the bottom of the list and it's just a whole big thing but so that was that. That was stressful as well. Riley is now asleep on my phone and on my blanket. Um, so yeah, it's just stress, stress all around. And I'm trying to keep the stress levels down so I don't flare and all of that. Um, I was supposed to go to the lupus clinic last week, but I rescheduled it till mid April because I was has I really didn't want to go into a hospital setting unless it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> so um, trying to stay away from the hospitals and clinics unless I absolutely have to go. Um, so who knows? I don't know. I may have to reschedule the April one as well, depending on how long this goes on for. Uh, what else do I have to tell you guys? I think that's about it. I think, I think that's it. I don't know. My head is like spinning with everything. Um, yeah, I just wish people would listen and do what needs to be done. I just, I still can't believe how many parents were taking their kids to the playgrounds. Like, are you people idiots? Really? Like, I just wanted to shake them. Um, also, um, I follow a lupus patient on Instagram and he has COVID-19. So um, it's been interesting following his journey with that um, because a lot of us were wondering if we were protected from it. Even though we're immune compromised, most lupus patients are taking hydroxychloroquine hydroxychloroquine which is an anti-malarial drug and it is currently in testing to be treating coronavirus and it's shown it's shown to be helpful in some cases in reducing um, inflammation in the lungs so um, a lot of us were like oh well if we're already taking Plaquenil then maybe we're protected Obviously, that's not the case because this uh, lupus patient, he's been on Plaquenil for three years, I believe he said, three or four years, and he got it. He got the coronavirus. So, <sighs> yeah. 
So that, I think when I saw that yesterday, um, it made me a little bit more nervous about being out and about for work uh, a little more. So I did talk to her about that today too at work. So I'm just glad that I am working with a family who is professional, who communicates and who actually cares about my uh, well-being. <laughs> so um, I th I've found a good one. I found a good family to be working with. So um, I'm sure that, and they're very happy with me. So they obviously don't want, they're not wanting to let me go or anything like that. So we're, we just have to work something out. We have to work out a plan. Um, I just hope this doesn't go on for too long. So anyways, um, our plan now <laughs> for this weekend is to go grocery shopping and, I'm nervous about it because I don't know how restocked they are on things because things are getting pretty empty. I'm hoping that this weekend the crowds aren't as crazy as they were last weekend because we just avoided it at all costs last weekend. Um, what we are hoping to do is I found these amazing, I came across these amazing videos on YouTube um, where these ladies shared these recipes for slow cooker meals that you can pre-make, like pre, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So like, you don't actually make them ahead of time, you just prep them. You do the prep work, and then you throw it all into a huge Ziploc bag, and you just put pop it in your freezer. And then you can literally just cook it from frozen in your slow cooker. And they um tripled each recipe so that they got three of three meals of each recipe for a total of 15 meals and they said that those meals each meal fed um their whole family which was i believe like four to five maybe even six people we're only two people so we figured it would give us leftovers um and excuse me, so it would give us, like, a good amount of, um, dinners, and, like, we just thought, like, we could just take a whole day to, like, prep everything, pop it in the freezer, and then we can cook all these, we just have to throw them in our crock pot, because I love our crock pot, and we don't use it enough, um, so, so that's what we're planning to do. I hope we can find all the ingredients we need so that we can do it because that would be awesome um i am going to link to the videos in the description of this video for you guys because i highly recommend you go and check them out um the ladies that i watched did two videos actually so the first one gave you 15 meals and the second one gave you 12 meals and then another channel called do it on a dime she did um a couple of pre-prep meals like that as well and um i think she did six meals five meals six meals something like that so i'll put the link to those three videos in the description of this video for you guys because i i, I really found that um if we can find all the ingredients for them, it's going to be very helpful at a time like this for not just us, but a lot of people. So this way you can just have all of these meals pre-prepped and they're easy to cook. And, you know, you can just do them all in one shot. And then you, we figured for us, because we're just a couple, like we would have like essentially a month worth of dinners so then all we would need to do is just get like some fresh produce each week and milk and that's probably it so it would just limit our time grocery shopping so that's kind of our plan I hope that it works out I'm currently printing off the recipes and then I'm going to make um, the grocery list. 
So I hope that it will work. I will do another video um, to tell you guys how it all works out. But definitely go and check out the videos I've, I've talked about. I highly recommend them. And the, the links for them will be in, in the description, which is right underneath this video. So go check it out. And I guess that's it. I'm going to sign off. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any videos. And I hope all of you are well and healthy and safe and following follow the rules <laughs> all right guys thanks so much for watching bye